Hello, welcome back to Diagonal Move. My name's Neil, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different, at least for me, and that is talk to you about the wonderful world of print and play games, specifically print and play war games. However, you can, of course, make print and play games from just about any genre. Um, so, why print and play war games? Well, um, about two years ago, I was uh, looking for something new and different, and I bought Cuba Libre, which is about as far removed from a print and play do it yourself game as you can possibly get. Uh, it's full of wooden wooden pieces, mounted maps, and so on. And um, I loved it. Fantastic game. But I wanted to look at some games that had the richness of the history. And to be honest, these games are quite expensive. So I was having a look at what else I could get, and I found At Any Cost, which is a Hex Encounter war game set in the Franco-Prussian War, and it blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. It, it's a wonderful game. Really, really good game. But for a beginner, it's a bit complicated. So... I had a look for something else, and I found Ewo, Bloodbath in the Bonins. Bon it's, it's a solitaire game from Decision Games. It's a kind of comic book, comic book type bag, um, and it's like a, a folder, and, and inside you have some, the map and some printed rules, and uh, a, few, a few counters. Uh, and again, this was another cool game. I really enjoyed this. Found it quite confusing in places, um, but it sort of gave me the bug between that and at any cost. And so I was looking for something else. What else could I get? And war games, as I mentioned before, war games do tend to run towards the expensive side, uh, um, particularly uh, Hex and County games. It, it just seems low print runs and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I was trying to find something that was a little bit cheaper, a little bit more affordable, where I could really kind of get stuck into it. And what I found was Unconditional Surrender Case Blue. And this is a genuine Hex Encounter war game uh, with a proper map and counters and rules. But it's based on the Unconditional Surrender system. There was a very, very big, very complicated game called Unconditional Surrender that I've not played. Um, but that is available through GMT Games. And anyway, this this uh, Case Blue version is a stripped-down game focusing just on the combat in um, in Russia uh, during 1942. Um, and it was originally available through a magazine. However, I found it on uh, Board Game Geek. Um, the designer Salvatore Vasta had put it on Board Game Geek as a free print and play scenario. So I had a go, I, had, I made it, had a go, I thought, wow, that was fantastic and really got the bug. And since then, I have got a handful at least of different print and play games. And the more I play them, the more I enjoy them. Some of my favorite games of all time have had print and play versions that I have made. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a quick look at some of those games and talk about why I like print and play board game, you know, some why I like those particular games, uh, and also give you an idea of what they look like before you make them, and uh, I probably won't go into detail about how I made, how I make them, maybe that's another video, but just give you a flavour for it, and uh, hopefully in interest, pique your interest, uh, see if you can, uh, if I can excite you to, to look at some of these games as well. So first up then is the, the Battle for Amadi which is a solo game uh, set in Iraq during the recent conflict there. And what you are trying to do is control the coalition forces to uh, capture certain points in the city um, within within a certain time frame. And as you do that, each turn there's, there's a chip pull system and you're pulling out uh, new, new uh, opponents to fight their practices. IEDs appear and, and so on, and it, it's a really interesting, challenging game. It's quick, um, not a lot of components to it. A nice one you can just fit on your 
on your coffee table uh, and play a couple of hours of an evening after work. Really cool game. And uh, for me, at least, a relatively new and different subject. Uh, we have also um, a more, much more familiar subject, but a very different implementation, and that is uh, Rifles in the Ardennes. This is the map, um, and it is a game in which you are using army roster sheets to create uh, a unit that will then complete a mission. On, on, on the map you will place certain points of interest and then your, your counters will, will move up and down through the different zones, almost like a, a, an American football field. Um, and you will start at the bottom, work your way to the top, and usually try to get try to get back before the the opponents have killed you. Um, really nice game. Really, our uh, abstracted down the kind of squad level combat of, of certain other games, and it it you know the maps. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's you know it, it's what it is, but it's a fantastic game, and there's actually a couple of others in the series, and um, I can't recommend this one enough. Actually, um, you do have the American forces and the Germans. There's also Russians. It simulates uh, Europe as a whole, not just the Ardennes region, and you can place these these counters on there to represent trees and so on. I'm not going to go through in, in depth about all these games um, at the moment. Perhaps in a future video I will, uh, but this is a, a great, a great example of a game you can print and play and have a tremendous amount of fun. It comes with a, a ton, an absolute ton of missions. I think there are there's eight, but I'm pretty sure there are some others online somewhere that you can find as well. Um, and you, you build your your forces and go and do the mission, and so it's like a two part thing. The, the, the building of the, your your unit and whether you're taking machine guns or riflemen and who's the leader and, and, and so on. It's it's really cool. Um, a very different different way to approach it. Um, solitaire again, and um, I do think there's a couple of others now. I think there's one in the Pacific, and there's also one set in Napoleonic times, I believe. Although I haven't played either of those. Now this. Unassuming Cardboard Box contains one of the most delightful games I've ever played in recent years, certainly in recent years, and this is Airborne in My Pocket. This was something that is completely free on BoardGameGeek, or at least it was seven or eight months ago. Um, and what you're doing is you're taking a parachute soldier who has landed behind the enemy lines in an attempt to complete their mission, which is blow up an armory or, or similar, in in a in a bunker, um, and these tiles will make up a, a map, and you'll explore the map, and you'll go into the bunker, explore and explore, and you'll have to blow it up, and you um, have different weapon cards and items, and there's a there's a um, an event deck that you work through, which acts as a timer, and it's another lovely side of this one is very quick half an hour tops certainly for the basic game um but there's a, something of a community on blogging around this and there is so much stuff available that i have yet to print it all off um there's enough to keep you going for ages and all you need to do is get the printer ink to, to print the game off it's it's wonderful really can't recommend that one enough and eventually i will get a better box and then moving on to another another freebie from Borg and Geek. Um, this is actually a free scenario um, for a game called Until the Bitter End. Uh, it's got some wonderful artwork. I think it's a it's actually a print and play only game that you buy directly from the designer, I believe, uh, who is Matt White. Um, and I haven't got the full game yet. But this scenario was available uh, in kind of a, a playtest type version. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you are controlling a squad as you uh, crash landed in a glider. And as the, the German soldiers are you know, investigating, you are trying to make sure that you survive against the encroaching German forces. And again, fantastic. It's another chip pool game, which is a mechanic that works brilliantly for solo, although this one is designed for multiplayer and solo. Um, 
really can't recommend this one enough. There's so many that I can't recommend enough, um, but this one is is very cool and the art book is fantastic. It actually comes printed in two pages and, you, and I just stuck them together, but you can keep them separate. Um, so that's a really interesting game, uh, totally worth, worth checking out. Um, speaking of newer games, I have a game called Game Games Mill, um, which is new to me. But just to show you the sort of format these games come in, um, it's basically just it's just a few PDF files downloaded from the the company who sell them, which in this case was Tiny Battle Publishing. And so there's like a few pages of rules that you can print off at home, a play rate card, and and the maps. Now, I mean, I do laminate laminate my maps because I think it's just more hard wearing. But you don't have to, and they come in these two separate sheets, and you just obviously just cut around the edges uh, if you do have um, perspex or something like that to put on the top. You you, you know you can do. Um, you will need to stick the counters together because they come in the front and back side, and I personally just use thicker uh, watercolour paper, like artist paper, uh, glue them together, cut them out, works absolutely fine. Um, so it's, it's not too daunting what you have, what you have to do. Um, you, there is the option of um, professionally printing games. Um, for example, Invaders from Dimension X, which is a Another game from Tiny Battle, and this is a game. Uh, it's in the Dimension X series. The other game I featured on on the channel was uh, Attack of the Fifty Foot Colossi, which is easily my my favourite war game up to now. Um, so this is the first one in that series. And again, it's just it's some paper print, you know, you print off, and some counters. But I had these professionally printed. Um, well, I took them to the printer shop, and. The reason for that was the 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 sizing is in US sizing, and over in the UK at least the size is slightly different, which means everything gets sort of shunted to one side. So some of these things I've shown you today are slightly smaller than they would probably appear if you're printing, you know, in America or you're buying the 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 made game from the publisher um, but the content is really nice and I think for myself from now on I think I will uh, print uh, at least the counters and the maps professionally I do have the maps somewhere I'm not sure where I've put them now um, yeah the map this is the map it's been prevent professionally printed off and this is Again, it's A3, which is a slightly smaller size than the, the full size in the, the American version. But it's just such a nice quality that will do that. Unfortunately, it does start putting the cost of them up. So you absolutely don't have to do that. But it's an option. And it's just a case of gluing things together. Um, so why would I go to all that trouble, though? I mean, gluing things together, getting things printed off. It, it's just it's a nice way to um, to be creative without necessarily being creative. I have a skill set that does not typically include arts and crafts, so just cutting some pieces of paper out and gluing them together is a great way to connect with the hobby and with my creative side without necessarily having to start from scratch or, or build something myself, so to speak. Um, it's also uh, here in the UK, This these games, you can buy them retail. But they tend to be imported, which brings in customs costs and all the rest of it. And, and you get, you know, what is a good, accessible way to get into the hobby over here, at least, is actually something that becomes quite an expensive thing to do. And if you're just trying it out, the game, you know, the hobby out for the first time, it's not the most practical way to do it. Um, I mean, for example, the Gaines Mill. Um, I think it was four dollars. Four dollars, I think. Um, can't remember. I'm not sure if that was in the sale, but four dollars is about three pound fifty, um, plus the cost of the ink to print it out and the glue. It's it's really a lot cheaper than the the cost of it over here, which would be the best part of thirty pounds um, or more, much more than you would pay over in the states. So there's that kind of cost-effective side, but it's it's just fun. It's a fun way to do something different with the hobby. Um, 
and you can explore these games like these small small independent publishers um i've shown you a few tiny battle games holland spiel i think do these games as well um in independent independent designers create their own like uh, until the bitter end and it's a real good way to support the hobby um probably gone on a little bit longer a tiny bit longer than i was planning um but what I'll probably do is, as I make some of these games up, I'll probably show you how I do it, a uh, separate video. Uh, I haven't decided yet when I get to do it. Um, and also, I'll probably look at some of these games in more detail because they are just so good and it's absolutely criminal that some of them are not much more well-known than they are. Um, hopefully, that's given you an overview of why I enjoy print and play games, at least. Um, do check them out. I'll pop some links to a couple of the publishers' websites and so on in the bottom just so that you can have a look for yourself at what's available. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, my name's been Neil, and I will see you next time.